Good morning. We welcome you to church, and we invite you now to join us for a time of quiet prayer and meditation as we prepare our hearts to worship the Lord. This is a day that the Lord has made, and we will be glad in it. We welcome you to church today as we gather to worship Christ, as we especially celebrate his coming into the world to be our Savior, uh, to be our, our, our propitiation at Easter. Father, uh, we come now to uh, announcements. Uh, we do want to welcome everyone who's here. Uh, we have holiday office hours that you need to be aware of. Also, bulletin. If you need anything in the bulletin, you need to check with Stacy to make sure there's some deadline changes on that over the month of December. So please make a note of that. Um, there's trail life donations you need to be aware of. Uh, the women's ministry is very important in the mailboxes. We've left them out all year, but right now is the time when people will be giving Christmas cards. Make sure you check your mailbox. Uh, next Sunday evening... Uh, we'll be having our church-wide Christmas party. Uh, most of you know that what, what we do is we bring finger foods, snack foods. Um, some people bring um, even a little bit heavier food. But it's time to bring, some, bring a favorite kind of party dish to share with the church. Uh, we'll have some singing, uh, some storytelling stuff for the kids. It's just a good time to be together as a church family. That will be the 10th. The 17th is going to be lessons and carols. So please make a note of that. Then um, our, we have a changed order of, um, of things that we're going to do on the 24th, which is a Sunday, that's Christmas Eve. And they're listed there in the bulletin. But please, please make a note of that. Um, also the shoebox collection uh, as well. Kristen has an announcement. <clears throat> It's that time of year when I'm grading a lot of papers and finals and things like that. So the way that you get a passing grade is that you bring one person to our Lessons and Carols service on December 17th. You get extra credit if you bring two. So I really would love to have a congregation full of people who come to this service on the 17th. Um, it just keeps getting better every year, and the choir just sounds fabulous. We had a rehearsal yesterday afternoon, and I hope you will invite your friends and family to share this, this beautiful service with us. I also need five more readers, so if you are interested in doing a reading that night, please um, contact me. Thank you so much. Also, a reminder, we'll be having a short congregational meeting following uh, the worship service, so be aware of that. We invite everyone to stay, but definitely the membership to stay. Uh, with that in mind, uh, let us prepare our hearts to worship the Lord now as we hear God call us to worship from Psalm 118. Let's stand together as we hear God's word. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let us give thanks and sing to God's glory as we sing God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen, number 211 in your Red Trinity Hymnal. 211, God Rest Ye Merry Gentlemen.
Great Father in heaven, we thank you that we come here and we rejoice at your tidings of comfort and joy that you've given us through Jesus Christ. That we come and we worship because Christ came and was born and lived and died and rose again. That we might be reconciled to you. That we might be saved from our sin. That we may be made into new creations through the power of you, our God. Father, we come now and we worship you. And we pray that you would meet with us as you have promised to. Fill this place with your spirit. Fill us this place with your spirit and unite us together in peace and harmony and love. May we be one body as Christ is our head. Father, we come and as we worship together as one, we say together as one the words that Christ used when he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we enter this season of the year, we enter to celebrate the birth of Christ. And what we have in the Apostles' Creed is a testimony which is in good part about Christ of who he is as part of the Trinity, as who he is being born of the Virgin, of suffering, of dying and rising again, of where he is now at the right hand of the Father, and what he will do when he comes back for us, his people. Christians, I ask you today, in whom do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Father in heaven, take our tithes and offerings and use them for your glory, for the building up of your church, and for the benefit of this world. And we pray it in Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated.
remain standing. Take your red Trinity hymnal. We'll be singing uh, selection number 198, which is a version of Psalm 24. Lift up your heads, you mighty gate. 198. be seated and let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our great God in heaven, we come and we adore you for you are a God who has loved our souls. You have loved our lives. You have pursued us and you have done so through Jesus Christ who left his throne in glory to become one of us, born in the lowest state, born in the manger raised the son of a carpenter, walking in dust, knowing misery, knowing hurt, knowing pain, knowing temptation, knowing rejection, knowing even death. But yet rising from the dead, you came to be one of us that we might be saved, that we might be restored. And even now, we who are here today might have the hope of new life now and resurrection to come because of the work and the example of Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. Father, we come and we confess that we do not often think enough of the sacrifice, the depth, the cost of our salvation. Though we sing of it and though we do think of it, yet it is never enough that we might come and adore you. And we long for those thousands of years. We long for heaven. We long for us to see your face and to give worship to you, the one who has loved our soul. Father, we come thanking you. We thank you for the blessings that we have. We thank you for our church. We thank you for the work that is happening here now. We are thankful for the youth ministry. We are thankful for the young people who are growing. We are thankful for some that are coming to join the church in the next month. We are thankful for the ones who have joined the church and who have professed faith, who are growing. We're thankful for those who have gone off to college and who are doing well. Father, you are blessing our children as you have promised to. We pray that you would continue to and use us to do so. Father, we thank you that you're blessing our church through growth in all areas. That we have remained faithful when so many fall away. 
Father, may this church always be faithful to your word and faithful to Christ. May we stand against sin and may we stand for the truth of the gospel that it's by the blood of Jesus that sinners are saved and there is no other way. Father, we come and we lift up our prayers. And Father, this week has been a difficult week for us as we say, have said goodbye to one dear saint beloved by this church and community as we have another who's not doing well. Father, we just pray your blessing upon the Allen family and the passing of Harold. We pray for the Caskey family. And we pray as Miss Mavis is not well, we pray that you would pour out your grace and peace upon them. Father, as we enter the holiday season, while we, it's a joyous time and a time of happiness, there's also much sadness as we remember those who've passed on and people that we miss. And Father, we pray that you would pour out your grace and your peace upon all who mourn the loss of someone who is missing someone this Christmas season. May you be strength to them. May you be their help. And may you be their comfort. Father, we come and we have many who are sick, many who have had surgeries. We have those who are battling cancer. We have many who are traveling. Father, you know the needs of this congregation, the daily needs, the physical needs, even the emotional needs. And we look to you and we lift each other up. And we pray that you would bless us and meet our needs through Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for our church and spiritual needs. Father, we pray for those who have wandered off. We pray for the lost sheep. And we pray that you would use us, that we would have a heart for those who have wandered. That you would, as we continually reach out to them, that, that you would work in their hearts to draw them back. Father, we have a heart for the, the ones that you're calling to be a part of our church, those that we may not even have met yet. Father, we pray that you would give us a heart to open up our lives, that we would open up our church, that we would allow people to come in and be a part of the church. Father, we pray for our church that you would help us what, help us to avoid the snares that Satan sets for us. Help us to love one another as your word has told us to. Help us to care for one another. Help us to let people care for us. And help us to know how much we need one another in this world. And why you have given us the church and why you have given us this church. Father, as we come and as we approve a budget, as we elect officers, we pray that you would help us with our ministry plan. We pray that we might see our budget grow, that we might do more ministry, that we might impact lives more and more. We pray for these men that you have called. We pray that you would bless them as they undertake this, the, the ministry of elder and deacon. We pray for the men and women that you've called, men to be elders and men and women to be deacons. Father, may you bless these people who take of their time and their effort, uh, of their money, of their whole being to serve your church. We thank you that they take this seriously. And we pray that you would bless them as they do. Father, we come. We pray for Erskine College and Erskine Seminary. We pray for the president, Dr. Gustafson. We pray for the provost, John Basie at the college. And we pray for the provost of the, the seminary, Dr. Holmes. And Father, this week as there's been attacks against our college, Father, we pray that the truth would come out. You're a God of truth. And we pray that you would protect the reputation of our college, that you would that you would close the mouths of those who would tell lies, who would skew facts. We pray that you would give the wisdom of Solomon to those at our college and our seminary, to the board, that they might show the truth of the matter and that they might push forward as Erskine
continues to transform itself to be a Christian college, truly Christian. And Father, we pray that your blessing would go upon them who are doing this work and that they would be encouraged and be strengthened and that you would bring ultimate success. Father, we pray for Lancaster. Father, our heart hurts to see so many out of church, to see our culture change so much in the last even 12 years, not to say even the last 20 or 30. And Father, we are part of, a, of, a, of, of an organization that brings change, the church. And Father, I pray you would help us to see the opportunity that is ours to bring change to Lancaster, not through social justice, not through uh, giving of money. These are good things, but ultimately through the gospel. And may we be focused on that. May our money follow our heart and our mouth. May we seek the cause of the poor. May we seek the cause of justice in our town. But never let them be separated from the cause of the gospel that men and women, boys and girls, need to know Jesus Christ. Father, as we do this work, bind us together. Draw us together. May we pool our gifts together. May we pool our talents together. May we pool our money together. May we pool our time together. And as we work together, may we share the burden of the ministry you called us to here in Lancaster. Father, we lift up our sister churches. We pray for the um, Rogers Memorial Church in Rock Hill, their pastor Bill Fleming. We pray for the Rowan Church um, down in Lugoff, and we pray for Stephen Jordan. Father, we pray this morning for the Oak Ridge congregation as they have their first Sunday with their new pastor officially, David Huffman. We pray that that would be a, a blessed union and that you might use David and that congregation mightily in the Heath Springs area. Father, as we go forward in worship and throughout this month and even into next year, may we see Christ. May we see all that Christ has done, and may we follow him. Bless us, we pray in Christ's name. Amen.
the children come forward with the children's sermon. Congregation, you turn to Luke, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11. You can sit over here. Good morning. Y'all doing all right? All right. So Christmas is coming, right? We know that. No, no, no sneaking up on it, right? Let me ask you, besides gifts, besides getting his gifts, what's your favorite part of Christmas? Spending time with family members. Spending time with family members. Same thing, Sarah? Same thing, Sarah? You had your name up. Or a hand up. What did you say? What? Good eats? Is that what you said? Jesus' birth. That's the preacher's kid if you didn't know. Giving gifts. Giving gifts. What you got? What she said. Okay, good. You know, we all have different traditions and stuff that we do, right? You know, and, and you know what's funny is, I bet you if we went around, everybody has a little bit different way in which they do Christmas, right? Some people do it Christmas, uh, Christmas Eve night, right? That's when my family was. We had Christmas Eve night. That's when all the presents were given. We got a little bit more stuff on Christmas morning. By 9 o'clock, Christmas was over. Some of you drag it out for three or four days, right? Nothing wrong with that. But it's just the way we do it. It's different. And you know what? We like the way we do it. But as you go through the giving of gifts and spending time with family and... Definitely eating some good food, right? That's right, last two hours this time. Did you want to add anything? No. But what Taylor and Myra Jean said, we want you to remember that too. It's easy to get caught up in the hype. It's easy to get caught up in the busyness. Make sure that we take some time to thank God for the biggest present we will ever get. The greatest thing was ever given to us, which is Jesus Christ. Okay? And you parents, make sure you take some time to spend with these young ones, to make sure they know that Christmas is not about all these other things, but really is about who Jesus is and what he's done. Let me pray for you guys, okay? Father in heaven, I thank you for these, for these, these, these young ladies and this young man. I thank you for the blessing that you've given us over the years with our children. We thank you that our children are growing up in faith, and we pray that these young people here will come to faith soon, and that they will trust all their days and the Jesus who came at Christmas and died at Easter, the one who has loved their soul, the one who has given his life, and the one who has rose from the dead. Father, may they know the true meaning of Christmas, the true meaning of the gospel, and what is truly important in this life, which is knowing Jesus Christ. For it is his name we pray. Amen. Thank you all. This Christmas season, we're going to be doing a series on gifts. Not exactly gifts in the sense of, uh, um, not like spiritual gifts per se, but just in the idea of gift giving and how we give, and give gifts and where we see God giving us gifts. And so I've entitled it God's Gifts as we look at various places throughout the scriptures of God giving gifts. Now, I'm not going to forget to read the scripture this morning, okay? I have a note here on my sermon to make sure that we read that. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at verse 13, 11, Luke 11, 13, but I'm going to read up to that point in verse 11 to set the stage. Um, let me pray before um, we read God's word. Father in heaven, we come before your word and we are thankful for the power of your word, the power of your spirit. And we pray now that you would pour out your spirit and your power upon us. That we might be transformed. That we might be encouraged. That our eyes may be opened and that our faith increased. Father, pour out your grace through your spirit and your word. Work in our hearts and our minds. Give words to your servant. And may this glorify you. And bless your people. For we pray it in Christ's name. Amen. Luke chapter 11, beginning with verse 1. 
Now Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, Father hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we, are, for we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation. And he said to them, Which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has arrived on the journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, Do not bother me, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, though, he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, yet because of his imprudence, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. And I tell you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks re receives, and the one who seeks finds, and the one who knocks it will be opened. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion. Now this is verse 13. If, then ye, if you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of our Lord endures forever. Amen. Christmas time means gifts, doesn't it? Let's just face it. Most of you are out there, unless you've gotten to that advanced age uh, and that level of wisdom where you just give them cash, you're out there trying to figure out what to give people. You're trying to work on it. And maybe last year was a good year. You know you have those good years where you just nail it, right? You give them a gift that's just perfect. And now you're like, I've raised the bar. But, you know, for children, it's different, isn't it? Don't you, don't you wish you go back to being a child and the joy and excitement and wonder that children have at Christmas and the receiving of gifts? You know, for adults, it often is a headache and exasperation and an expense. Um, the context of our passage here is gifts. It talks about what the Father will give. It talks about asking and giving. There's the illustration here in Luke. First, you have Luke's account of the Lord's Prayer. Then an illustration of the friend persistently asking. Then the you know, kind of the idea we see in other, the, the other Gospels, the ask, seek, and knock command. And then it comes to the idea of earthly fathers, evil fathers, giving good gifts. If a child asks for a fish, you don't give a serpent. If, he asks for an egg, you don't give a scorpion, which leads us into verse 13, which is where we're focusing. Now, maybe when you were little, you remember making a list. Do some of you children still make lists? How many of the children have made their Christmas list so far? You, know, you can do that on Amazon now, right? Did you know that? You can get your list on Amazon. Um, you know, early... When we're old enough to write, when we're just sort of, you know, able to do that, those lists could get kind of long. And they could be kind of, from mom and dad's exp experience, expensive, right? And then as we got a little bit older, maybe in our teen years, we kind of got them more shorter and a little more focused on what was reasonable. You know, as I think about this context of God and asking when we ask God for things in prayer, it really should be the opposite. As we grow older, we realize to ask for less, more focused. I think as we grow in Christ, as we grow in our understanding of the power of prayer, we should grow, our prayer list should grow, and the things we ask for should grow. Still focus, but grow. He's making a case here that he, like our earthly fathers, gives good gifts because he is our perfect heavenly father. 
And he wants us to ask. That's the key. The first thing we see that if we sinful people can give good gifts to our children. See, that's not just us as Christians who give good gifts. It's a societal thing for the most part, right? All people, there are some exceptions. There are some deadbeat dads and moms and horrible people who don't take care of their children. But most people in the world, whether they're Christian or not, take care of their children. They provide for their needs. They provide for many of their wants. And that's true of almost any race or creed or nationality. It's a human trait to care for our sons and our daughters. If this is true of people enslaved to sin, how much more will our Heavenly Father, who is perfect, perfect in wisdom, perfect in love, perfect in power, give us Christians good gifts? How much more will He keep His promises to us? One of the, one of the things that terrifies me as a father is that I might promise something to my children and not follow through because I want my children to trust my word. But you know, with our Father in heaven, it, there's no doubt. When He promises, He fulfills. God wants us to test Him. God is wanting us to test Him here. There's a wrong type of testing. We talked about this in Sunday school. It happened to overlap. But there's a wrong type of testing. You know, Jesus is tempted to test God. And Jesus answers the devil there and says, Do you not know that it's the, the word of the Lord, that you shall not put the Lord your God to the test? So there's a sense in which we are not to put God to the test, that we're not to put him to our test. But there are other places in the scripture where God tells us to test him. The, one of the clearest is in Malachi 3.10, where it says, Bring the full tithe into the storehouse. Test me on this, he says, and see if I will not open up heaven and pour out blessings. And the Hebrew there is the same Hebrew that is used to describe the flood of Noah. The key is that when God says, test me on it, you do it. And the way that we usually te are testing God is by our obedience to what God has said. Doing what God has said testing to see if he'll be faithful, which he will. And that's the key difference. God is saying to us, test me. Ask, seek, and knock for those things which are appropriate and good according to the will of God. Lift up your prayers to me. See if I will not answer you as I have promised to. Since I am a perfect father, are you lifting up your prayers to the Lord? Are you? I know you do, Karen. Do you believe God can do it? You should. Last Sunday evening, we went to the installation of a, a new minister in our presbytery, and the pastor who was preaching the sermon, the installation sermon, said, talked about the end when we get to heaven. He said, in the end, we will come to see how much more powerful and effective and useful our prayers were in this life, more than we ever thought. How true that is. At the end of the day, our efforts, our work, our education, the things that we do in the church, if they are not drenched and bathed in prayer, how useless they often become. And yet, in our weakness, in our simplicity, in our, unable, in our inability, yet through prayer, God blesses and grows the church to his glory. We need to be in prayer to God. We need to be asking, seeking, and knocking knowing that he is a father who gives good gifts to his people. And then we see a specific gift that's given here. Our second, and only two points this morning. Our second point is that the Lord will give you the Holy Spirit. How much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? See, this is the great gift from God for Christian people. It may sound 
odd to ask for this gift. Yet it is the one promised by Jesus in John 14. The helper, the comforter, the Holy Spirit. He is the empowerer of the Christian life. You know, I remember back in Christmas, some of my favorite Christmas presents where before everything was on a screen, you know, everything today is on a screen, right? But back when we didn't have screens as much, one of my favorite, my two favorite, uh, favorite Christmas presents, one was a model train, not, Christmas 1977. It was a Santa Fe. It was yellow and black. I can still remember it. The other was one of those race tracks with the little cars you put on it, and you had the little gun-looking thing, and you'd race. Now, there was a frustration with these things, though. You had to put them together, and you had to make all the metal pieces make contact, else your car would go around and all of a sudden stop. There wouldn't be any power. There wouldn't be anything to make it go. Same with the train. Train going around, eventually that little connector piece, which is really tiny, it would come loose, and the train would stop. We had to make sure that it was connected properly to get powers to run the train or run the engine, to run the cars. This is the same thing in the Christian life. Without the Holy Spirit, the Christian life is non-existent. It is dead. It doesn't move. It doesn't happen. For the Holy Spirit works to change us. We're not out here floating along and God trying to get our attention. He reaches out and grabs us. And he does it through the Holy Spirit who opens our eyes to our sin, shows us the truth of the Word of God, shows us Christ, brings us to faith, applies all of Christ's works and benefits to us, imputes it to us so that it is ours at faith. And by this we are adopted into God's family. The Holy Spirit then continues to transform us, keep us from falling away, works to make us like Christ. We must have the Holy Spirit or there is no Christian life. How important these words here that Jesus gives. If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? He gives us what we need. Now, if you want to be cruel to your children, and I'm not suggesting you be cruel to your children, but if you want to be cruel to your children, buy them a toy that requires batteries, and then don't get them the batteries Christmas morning. Now, I know y'all pretty well. I doubt any of you are intentionally that cruel, but no doubt someone maybe has done it in the past where you bought what you thought was the right batteries, maybe some double A's when really you needed triple A's. And there you sit there on Christmas morning with the present that they want, no power. That's not a good morning. And so you're out looking for someplace open, and you're going to pay three times what you would normally pay for batteries to make sure that your children have the batteries that you should have gotten. I came close one year. We need the Holy Spirit, for without it, the Scriptures do not come alive. The Scriptures are not saving without the Holy Spirit. Our prayers do not get to heaven without the Holy Spirit. We do not see, we do not understand without the Holy Spirit. There's no life. No salvation, no hope without it. Yet for all who cry out for God, all who cry out for salvation, for all who cry out for the Holy Spirit, God says He will give it. He will give His children the gifts they need. Now, we as Presbyterians, we trace our roots back to John Calvin. We just had the 500th anniversary of the, of the Reformation. We, we are called Calvinists. And often we get lumped into predestination. In fact, Steve and I were talking about this morning. Steve made a joke about that a little bit. 
Um, and it's true, we do believe in the God, God's sovereignty, and we do believe in a doctrine of predestination. However, many have identified John Calvin as the doctrine or the theologian of predestination, which is not right. For those who of our persuasion who study Calvin say that he would be more accurately identified as the theologian of the Holy Spirit. Now, I know what you're thinking. Presbyterians and the Holy Spirit, that usually don't go together a lot of times, right? That's not who we're identified with. But we're not known for this, but yet our theology, our understanding of the scriptures, has a very deep and well-developed theology of the Holy Spirit. More than we can get into today. The Holy Spirit is not just an add-on. You know, we kind of got to understand the Father, we definitely know the Son, and then you got the Holy Spirit. He's crucial. He is crucial to our salvation. He is crucial to our need. He is crucial to our life, and we need Him. We need Him to be saved. We need Him to grow. We need Him to, to hold us. In his writings, John Calvin, he details this work of the Holy Spirit, showing how crucial the Holy Spirit is to salvation. So, don't run over this passage. When he says that if we as evil men can give good gifts to our children, how much more will he as the perfect Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit? You know, if we're not careful, we might just sort of glaze over that in our devotional reading and not have the full impact of what is being said here. That in giving us the Holy Spirit, he is giving us himself and access to the throne of God. So that when we pray for healing through the Holy Spirit, it goes to the throne and Christ intercedes, and the Father, through his perfect will, works. When we pray for comfort, Holy Spirit, Christ, Father, and God works. You see the power that's unleashed here. God will give us the Holy Spirit. This is the key to the Christian life. This morning, as we enter the Christmas season, we can see that God's gift to sinners is salvation. That he has given us Jesus Christ. That Christ came to be one of us, the God-man. That he came to be perfectly righteous. He is the God-man, the man without sin. And that he came at Christmas to die at Easter. That he might rise again. So that our sins might be forgiven. And that we might have the hope of eternal life. Christ came to do the work you could not do to destroy the work of the devil in this world and to make a way for sinners to return to God and have the hope of glory. The only way that you can gain Christ is by the work of the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit inside of you. This morning, are you needing to be saved? Have you never professed faith? Do you need to come to Jesus and find forgiveness? Then you can ask. Do you need strength to be remain in the faith? Are you struggling? Are you sinning? Do you seem like you can't get victory over sin? You can ask God. Do you have needs in your life? Maybe you have physical ailments disease, sickness, hurts. Maybe you have financial needs. Maybe you have emotional needs. Maybe you have family needs. Whatever your need, we have a God who comes and says, ask, seek, and knock. Who promised to give us the Holy Spirit to indwell in us and take our prayer requests and with groanings beyond what we say, give to the Lord our requests and he will answer us. We're called to ask. We're called to keep asking. 
because He loves us as a perfect Father. And He has promised to give us good gifts, including the Holy Spirit. If earthly fathers, we can give good gifts, how much more our Heavenly Father gives us good and perfect gifts from above. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come today and we thank you that you are a God who gives gifts. And as we look over that, over the idea of your gift giving through the month of December, we pray that you would bless us. Help us to know the power of the Holy Spirit. Help us to know that he is given freely. And if we seem to be lacking power in our life, we pray that you would give us the Spirit. That you would give us the fruit of the Spirit that you would give us the power of the Spirit, that the Spirit of God would show us the wisdom of God in the Scriptures and apply it to our hearts and our minds. Father, pour out your Spirit upon us, your people, for we come and we pray it in the strong name of Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our hymn of response is number 195 joy to the world the lord has come 195 let's stand and sing to god's glory out of the red trinity hymnal Salvation is freely offered to any who will believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God and Savior of sinners, who will ask God for that salvation, to ask for the Holy Spirit to come and apply Christ's works to your life. He does that for his children, and you can be one by faith. Receive now the benediction of the Lord, and after the benediction, remain seated for the congregational meeting. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his counts upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen.